Road Trippin' brought to you by McDonald's, Hickson Transmission, Speedy's Oil and Auto, and Crown Automotive Group. We're traveling in style thanks to Crown Automotive Group. McDonald's is where we grab a snack for the road. Tucked among the Appalachian foothills, Rome is a perfect spot away from the big city. To get a real sense of Rome's past, Oak Hill and Martha Berry Museum is the best place to start. Oak Hill was Martha Berry's lifelong home. The interior is maintained as it was when the family lived here. It's where it all began and considered the heart of Berry College. And this is where Martha Berry uh, uh, grew up as a child. She lived here her entire life. She was a master of publicity and public relations. And so she grew a small country church school into what is now Berry College. Beloved among her peers and students, Martha Berry was well connected throughout the world. I know a lot of movie buffs will appreciate some trivia about this home and it'll attract the younger audience. Tell us about that. Well, it's the location where Sweet Home Alabama was filmed and so we get a lot of visitors who come specifically for that. This room is Martha Berry's dining room and in the movie, it actually is um, Candace Bergen's New York apartment, but uh, it actually was filmed in this room. The grounds and gardens are well kept thanks to a student work program at the college. The Berry campus is considered the largest in the world, taking up 26,000 acres. The Ellen Axon Wilson homecoming exhibit runs through October at the Martha Berry Museum. She was best known as First Lady of the 28th President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, from 1913 until her death at age 54. One of the things, of course, Ellen Wilson is remembered for is designing the White House Rose Garden. And she did have a very uh, uh, good eye for landscape and for landscape design. Ellen was educated and trained in the arts. She also made an impact as an advocate for the poor while in the White House. She possibly could have uh, made her living as an artist, but uh, she gave up a lot of that uh, desire to be an artist to raise her family and to support her uh, husband, Woodrow Wilson, and his uh, drive to become the president. Our next stop was once a Confederate fort. It's now the final resting place for Ellen Wilson. We're at the Myrtle Hill Cemetery, located just south of downtown Rome. Over 20,000 Romans have been buried here dating back to 1857. Their new free mobile app can change the way you experience this beautiful cemetery. In addition to over 350 Civil War graves, the tomb of the known soldier of World War I is also at Myrtle Hill. Charles Graves was moved three times before his final stop. He represents all young men who paid the ultimate price for freedom. The Rome Clock Tower, located on Neely Hill, is the city symbol and remains a visitor destination. Climb to the top for the 360-degree view of Rome and its seven hills. Check out the original clockworks and murals showing some of Rome's history. Rome may be a small town, but one full of activity. The Etowah, Ustanala, and Kusa rivers weave through downtown Rome. It was a popular river trade area until the Civil War. Today, it carries kayakers and river cruises. Rome was founded in 1834 between the rivers. Today, shopping and dining options are daily draws. Sidewalks and restaurants along Broad Street can also become a stage for musicians. Maybe if you want to kind of, when in Rome, do as the Romans do and, and do the, the more local fair, we've got a, a wonderful website called RomeEvents.org where you can locate just about anything from a cultural event to trivia to live music to um, different art exhibitions and um, different events like our First Friday concerts which go on from May to September and are free to the public here in the downtown area. Rome is rich in Southern heritage and history. There's a reason the Cherokee people call this area the Enchanted Land.